Well, guys, for any grandparent, the thought of a child overseas alone in jail can be terrifying. The man we spoke with said the person who called him knew his name, his grandson's name, and enough about his family to convince him he was the real deal. Family means just about everything to Carl Schaefer. That's my granddaughter. He says he'd do anything to help them. In 1976, he gave his brother a kidney. Other than being married and having two kids, giving my brother a kidney was the most important thing I've done. So it shouldn't come as any surprise what his first response was when he thought his grandchild was in trouble. How can I help? That's exactly what I thought. Schaefer says he got a call from someone claiming to be his oldest grandson, Caleb. I said, well, how you doing? He says, not too good. I'm in jail in Lima, Peru. The caller said he needed $10,200 to make bail, and he asked his granddad to keep it quiet. Don't tell the parents, don't tell anybody. But Schaefer says he was so worried about his grandson, he went straight to the bank and wired the money. A few days later, he got another call asking for $27,000. So I said, well, how do you spell your name? He says, K-A-L. I knew right then it was a scam because his name is spelt with a C. Just to make sure that you're aware of who you're talking to and verify it before you, before you send it. Uh, because usually once you send it, it's gone. Carl Schaefer says by the time he found out the real Caleb was at college in Texas, it was too late. His money was gone. Now he wants his story to serve as a warning. Beware of callers who want to use your love of family for their own personal gain. Police say to prevent this from happening to you, first resist the pressure to act quickly. And even if the person on the phone tells you not to tell anyone, go ahead and call your grandchild or another family member right away to make sure the call is legitimate. Susan, I don't know about you, but I'm definitely guilty of this. The first thing I do when I go to the grocery store is put my purse right here in the front of the grocery cart. But police say this just makes it all too easy for more and more thieves to get their hands on your wallet. Whether you're looking to fill your closet, mm, some leggings and a shirt, or your pantry. Food is the most primary. That's probably food twice a week, sometimes three times. Savvy shoppers know when you get to the store, you gotta have a game plan. A lot of times I take a list. I hate to go dilly dally and just kind of look around and nope, I'm, I'm in and out. But police warn while you're focused on your shopping list, thieves are zeroing in on your purse. We have noticed an increase before last month. We didn't really notice a lot of this going on, so it's definitely an increase. One of the biggest purse snatching hotspots is this shopping area near Kellogg and Dugan. And the easiest target is anyone who leaves their purse in their shopping cart. Yeah, my mom does. I have before. And I, if I do that, I always put one hand on it and, and, care, and have the strap in the other hand. Police say thieves don't always take the whole purse. Sometimes they just reach in and grab a wallet while shoppers are distracted. So they say the best way to protect yourself, pack light while shopping. I would suggest only taking what you need. If you have a, you know, a few cards that you're going to use, just put those in a simple wallet, put it in a pocket, or get a purse that straps over you so it's constantly on your person and not left unattended in the cart. We posted this story online earlier and we got a lot of comments from viewers to say they usually just strap their person with this child safety belt here. But police say since these are actually reaching into your purse, this isn't going to keep your stuff safe. They say the best bet is just to keep your belongings on you at all times. Live in West Wichita, Pierre Shalaman, Kick News. Well, that's right. The Wellington Rec Center's cameras caught this video of two guys snooping around outside early yesterday morning. They didn't even know about it until today and before we could even air it to help police get these guys identified. They not only found out who they were, but also connected them to five burglaries in just the last month. The security cameras around the Wellington Recreation Center are a new addition installed just before Labor Day. After three burglaries in one month, Cody White says it was time for a security upgrade. It happens once, you're thinking, okay, maybe it's kids being kids, but then when it continually happens, it just gets old, you're tired of dealing with it. White says those cameras caught what would have been their fourth break-in. This guy has some kind of tool in his hand, but once he and his partner spot the camera, they decide just to steal that instead by using the top of this outdoor ashtray to knock it down. If I had long enough hair, I wanted to pull it out. They took the camera, but not the video. Within hours of getting their hands on this, police say they not only identified both suspects, they found enough evidence to connect them to five burglaries within the last month. Two at the rec center, two at this church, and one just this Labor Day weekend at Case's Country Cafe. 
We've blurred both of the people in this video's faces because police tell us they live in Wellington and are under the age of 16. Cody White told us he suspected the burglars were kids who had been in the rec center before because the very first time they stole video games and candy. Just to think that it could be somebody out there you know, that we had an employed or this has been through our programs. It's, it's disheartening. Now he tells us his fears were confirmed. They're kids and one of them has a relative who used to work at the Wellington Rec Center. Police say they are working on recovering stolen items from all those burglaries now and say they will be presenting a case to the Sumner County attorney on both of those teams.